The History of Polio is the title of the next presentation. With our continued diligence in advocacy, fundraising, and support, we are confident that the phrase will soon describe reality, a future when polio is consigned to the history books. For almost a century, Rotary has focused its helpful skills and resources on disabled children. Today, we're on the verge of ending one of the most devastating diseases to strike children. It's called paralytic poliomyelitis. For over 37 years, Rotary has been at the forefront of the world's battle against this debilitating disease. As the present chair of the International Polio Plus Committee, Mike McGovern has witnessed the birth of Rotary's efforts to eradicate polio and the remarkable progress we have made bringing us with this amazing Rotary story to the brink of history. In 1986, as a 30-year-old Rotarian, I remember being asked by a fellow club member for $1,000 as part of the original Polio Plus fundraising campaign. It was exciting when Rotary proved to the world that it was serious about taking on this terrible disease. I remember the Philadelphia Convention in 1986, and Les Wright, then chairman of the Polio Plus campaign, capturing the meaning of all this by saying, today, in some nameless village, a child greeted the new day unaware that during the night, polio passed him over because he was immunized. Since that historic day, I have seen personally how polio eradication is truly the project of all Rotary Clubs and Rotor Actors and generations of Rotarians. Today, I would like to take you on a brief journey through the history of Polio Plus. Let's hear the voices of those who were there at the very beginning and from those who continue the battle today. We begin in 1979. In April 1979, I picked up a copy of the Reader's Digest. And there I read, for $100 million, the World Health Organization had eradicated smallpox. So this caused me to start to think, perhaps for something like that sort of money, we could do something similar. So I've, on arrival back, I telephoned Dr. John Sever. Uh, that was an inspired uh, decision. Because Dr. John Sever at that time was the head of the Infectious Diseases Division of the National Institutes of Health in Washington, D.C. I knew him, he was one of my district governors. I knew what his ability wa abilities were, and I knew we'd get the answer from him. So I phoned him up and I said, John, I told him what had happened. I said, John, is there anything we could do along similar lines to eradicate something, some disease? He said, leave, leave it with me, I'll let you know. A few days later, he phoned me up and he said, Clem, the answer is polio. Why polio? Because it was then, then uh, crippling and, and, and maiming a thousand kids a day. But there was a, it was pre preventable and there was an egg vaccine and it could be administered by people other than trained medical person. And we had 850,000 of them scattered around the world in 40,000 communities of every country of the world. So all we, we didn't need medical people, we could do it ourselves. So that was the basis upon which we decided to embark upon the polio immunization program. I'm Matt Caparaz from the Philippines, past president and uh, a living witness to the beginning of Polio Plus. You see, I was a, a director when President Jim Bomar went to Manila to start a five-year Rotary campaign to immunize all the children of my country from polio, children five years and younger. And he did it by placing two drops in the mouth of uh, a Filipino child, two drops of Sabin uh, vaccine. 
And then government officials and uh, Rotary officers did the same with the many children brought there by their grateful parents. We did not uh, light any uh, fireworks to mark this uh, national event, but from it developed a pattern that uh, in later years mobilized communities, enlisted the support of millions of volunteers, Rotarians and non-Rotarians, and even cost the lives of many purveyors of the vaccine to waiting children in dangerous places because of their uh, sacrifice and their efforts. More than two and a half billion children have been uh, safeguarded against this terrible disease. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Brad Howard. The plan to eradicate polio in the Philippines to protect six million children from the dreaded disease was ambitious, but it was so successful that Rotary decided to take it to the next level. And in 1985, we launched Polio Plus. In 1987-88, when I was president of the Rotary Club of Oakland Sunrise, Rotary set a goal of raising 120 million US dollars to immunize the children of the world and eradicate polio. My club raised $25,000, but together we raised $247 million. We felt our job was done. It was just beginning. Rotary was then joined by the World Health Assembly when they unanimously adopted a resolution and a commitment to the global eradication of polio and to immunize every child. Rotary became one of the spearheading partners of a new public-private partnership, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, which has eliminated the disease from 125 countries. And Rotary has become the collective conscience of this cause. I know that my involvement in this effort has changed my life, not just because I've had the opportunity to participate in 24 polio eradication campaigns, but because it has given me and my entire family some of our richest life experiences. Rotary galvanized its partners. It influenced Rotarians around the globe. We used our contacts in the medical community, in the pharmaceutical world, and well, the entire world of Rotarians to deliver drops, to transport vaccines, to raise money, to gain support, to engage governments, and to raise awareness of eradicating polio. And the successes came quickly and decisively because of people like this. 60 years ago, at the young age of 17 months, I became paralyzed by polio. Good morning. I am Ann Lee Hussey, past district governor from Maine, USA. Thanks to medical care, my caring family, and a caring community, I have been able to live a fairly normal life, unlike so many others who have been more severely impacted by this disease. In 2001, I joined Rotary, and I quickly found and discovered what I could do to help eradicate polio. I have met countless polio survivors like me, and I understand the hardships they endure. I have had the opportunity to organize and lead 27 National Immunization Day teams to over eight countries. Thank you. And throughout my travels, I have met wonderful Rotarians like you. Rotarians whose commitment and passion to eradicating polio continues to inspire me to do even more. Thank you for continuing to contribute until this dreaded disease is defeated. Together, let us give the gift, the greatest gift, to all children everywhere for all future generations. 
But despite the commitment of Rotarians like Brad and Ann Lee, polio has always been a resilient and defiant enemy. Many in governments, other organizations, started to suggest, to suggest that it was impossible to eradicate polio, and we should just do our best to control the disease. Obviously, we weren't going to celebrate the eradication of polio during our centennial in 2005. Mm -hmm. But Rotary's determination commanded the attention of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who set a challenge grant of $355 million toward our cause if we would simply raise another $200 million. Rotary accepted the challenge, and Gates continues to match our fundraising two to one up to U.S. $35 million per year for every dollar Rotary commits to polio eradication through 2018. There were others who provided reserves and fresh forces through the years, but that did not just happen. Good morning. I'm past District Governor Judith Diamond from the Thames Valley in England. And I'm very proud to be the leader of Rotary's Polio Eradication Advocacy Task Force. All around the world, Rotarians uh, uh, encourage their governments to continue with polio vaccination at home and to provide financial assistance at a global level. And thanks to Rotarians, governments of the world have provided more than seven billion US dollars for polio eradication. And there are no better more, or effective advocates for polio than Rotarians in helping to make sure that our work has the public support and the financial assistance it needs to succeed. And this last week, we've had the most recent examples of advocacy success, including from Geneva, support from the Commonwealth Health Ministers, and also from the World Health Assembly. And in Japan, last Thursday, from the leaders of the G7 countries. <clears throat> Thank you to all Rotarians. You help to shine a light on polio and to push your government to help end polio now. I agree, Judith. We have to continue the battle. I am Suzanne Ray from Cairns, Australia. As the co-founder of the world's greatest meal to help end polio, I want to thank the Rotarians amongst you who have organized events in 72 countries and thus raised more than $6 million to help end polio. <clears throat> greatest meal events can be just two people having lunch. They can be large, lavish dinners. They can be frugal meals where special collections are made. In your clubs, they can be raffles and auctions. Every amount you give is matched two times over by the Gates Foundation. Whatever way you choose to help end polio, in your, personally or in your club, it all brings us much closer to a polio-free world. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Judith and, and Suzanne. Of course, we all know that we did persevere. We continued to win battles against this formidable foe, polio. Since 1988, all of us have helped to bring polio cases from over 350,000 cases in a year to just 16 cases so far in all of 2016. Our campaign succeeded in making India polio-free, 
a success nobody thought possible. And now, and now the continent of Africa has achieved a huge victory with close to two years of no new polio cases anywhere in Africa. And today, pessimists still say that it's too hard to eradicate polio from the last two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan. But Rotary, all of us, and its partners know better. Good morning. I am Sajid Bhatti. And I am Jahangir Mughal. We are, the, we are the district governors from Pakistan to Rotary districts. Pakistan has reduced its polio caseload by over 80% since last year, and we are optimistic that we see the last case of polio in Pakistan in the current year, in the current, in the current calendar year. Led by our tertiary chair, Aziz Maiman, Pakistan Rotarians immunize children at transit points such as bus stops, bus stations, hold polio awareness rallies, and work with communities to find the children who are being missed. We look forward to a close. We work closely with, the, uh, with our partners at WHO and UNICEF and with the Pakistani government. The funding provided by Rotary to Pakistan pays for over 150,000 health workers to provide polio vaccines in the inner cities and in the high trains of our mountain. Rotary provides the polio vaccine carrier that keeps the polio vaccine effective. We fund transportation to remote areas. We are working very hard to ensure that we get the job done. Thank you for your support to Polio Free Pakistan and a Polio Free World. And we have very good news from Pakistan. Thanks to the Eradication Initiative and to Pakistani Rotarians led by Aziz Memon, in this past week, for the first time in 30 years of environmental testing for the polio virus, no polio virus was found in any environmental sample in Pakistan. Great news. No, it, it is Rotary, all of us, that had the audacity to take on the eradication of polio. It was Rotary that stepped forward and said, we can do this. Even when almost everyone else said it couldn't be done. In your leadership, on the ground, your optimism, your persistence, and your practical approach have created a model of service that has truly brought us this close to the end. And when we do eradicate polio, it will be only the second human disease ever eradicated. It will be the climax of the most successful public health venture of all times. It will serve as a model of commitment and strength for non-governmental organizations working together with governments in the private sector to take on the next great challenge. But overall, Rotary, all of us will live up a to a commitment we made 30 years ago to the children of the world. Truly, we are giving a gift to the children of the world, a polio-free world. Thank you very much. <laughs>